why do I insist on using the King James Version of the Bible and reading Old English? Well, let me show you one of the biggest lies in Christianity that I guarantee you, you have believed. All right, let's see it. Let's start in Matthew 5.22 with the newer translations, and I'll read it to you as you already know it. It says, and this is Jesus talking, But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. So when you read that, and you read the words of Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount, you read, Wow, uh, I better be careful and not get angry with my brother, or I'm going to be liable to God's judgment. And that's what's taught in Christianity today. But let me read it to you in the King James Version Bible. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother, without a cause, shall be in the danger of judgment. You see how it says without a cause? Those three words change entire Christian doctrines, without a cause. So there's a time to be angry with your brother, and it's with good reason, not without a cause, right? And here, here's, let's read in the newer version, there's a little uh, number three next to it. It says down in the very bottom, it says, some manuscripts insert without a cause. So they admit plainly that they've taken that part of it out so you'll notice this creator is not paying close attention to the footnote they just read because it does not say that this had always been in ancient manuscripts it said some manuscripts insert without a cause meaning it wasn't there and they added it in it is a secondary addition to the text and we can demonstrate this this is p64 this manuscript is the earliest known witness to this passage in matthew 5 and just at the very bottom in the red box you can barely make out the tops of some letters and those letters can only be the end of the genitive word of him or his and the beginning of the greek word enochos which means liable or guilty and the word e key which is generally translated without a cause would have to go in between those two words and guess what it's not there so the earliest manuscript witness we have to this passage doesn't have it the next two earliest witnesses are codex sinaiticus and codex vaticanus let's take a look at codex vaticanus as you can see here inside the red box you do not have the word e key in between aftu and enojos it's just not there so let's take a look at codex sinaiticus which is the earliest extant witness to the entire New Testament. Now you'll see the word Iki is there, but it wasn't in the original hand. It was something someone added to the margins of the manuscript in a later scribal hand. In other words, somebody inserted it at a later time, and it is not original to this text. In other words, the King James Version is representing a secondary reading. Someone added it into the text. Newer translations of the Bible are restoring the original text. So what this content creator is getting upset about is the restoration of the more original text. Why? Because that conflicts with their preferred dogmas. Because they would like to have authorization. They would like to have justification for being angry with their brother. And so they would like the King James Version to be original. But it's not. Because originally Jesus just said anyone who is angry with his brother is liable or is guilty. And they've sold us a doctrine that you should never be angry with anyone ever. And they've tried to sell passive Christianity by taking things out of the Bible that were strong Christian doctrines before and are no longer in the Bible. So now it just says, don't get angry at all. Just live and let live, brother. Don't ever be angry. And I guarantee you believe that because you've read it in these newer translations. But right here it says, without a cause. So in short, this creator is rejecting the words of Jesus because their identity politics and their dogmas are more important to them. And the fit for this video has been The Dark Knight. You know, this is something that I started realizing when I was about 20 years old. That the King James Bible, as well as the NIV, which is just in, a, in the American Standard, were just American English translations of the King James. It wasn't until much later um, that I found the Revised Standard. Uh, the Revised Standard is more accurate to the Sinaiticus and the Valentinus. And so in that one, it is correcting the mistakes of King James. And I found it so interesting that how many people believe in the King James version or the NIV versions, which are very wrong. It was at that same time I started realizing that the Strong's Concordance 
was very much incorrect and did not have proper translations as well and were more predicated on the doctrine of Protestantism and the doctrines that people had come up with over time. So therefore, I began to look deeper and that's when I actually discovered the Sinaiticus and the Valentinus and started realizing that there are many mistranslations that the current Bibles that most people use. And so how can it be correct? And that thought also led me to this. If you are a Christian, unless you can read or you have someone you can trust to translate coin in Greek, to translate the Aramaic, to translate Proto-Hebrew, you don't know what you're reading. You don't know what you're following. You're following whatever the church doctrine to which you grew up in or the church doctrine that you have now chosen. And when I left the Baptist church and started going to uh, non-denominational, well, first I went to the Methodist church and then went to non-denominational churches. I started seeing how the doctrines were different based on what type of church it was. So depending upon the church you belong to, you have different ideas and doctrines that may not fit with the most original, which none of the texts are original. There are no original completed texts. When people say that, oh, we have writings from probably the 60 CE or 50 CE, you don't have the original. You might have a scrap, but you don't have a complete manuscript of any of those things. So you are reading it based on what scribes thought was supposed to be in it or how it should read written about a hundred to 200 years later, you have doctrines by people like Justin Martyr and Irenaeus who may have had access to the original scripts, but you are still reading their interpretations of those original scripts. So until around 200, you don't have full manuscripts. Those are about the oldest ones we have. So you have no idea what you're believing in. You have no idea what you're reading. And I know many are going to say that the only thing that matters is that Jesus was born and that Jesus died and that Jesus rose again. Even those stories are different. Even those stories had different interpretations. This is why you had the Council of Nicaea. Because Arius was saying that Jesus is not part of a trinity, that Jesus was a created being, that Jesus was showing the way to believe in the true God, not Yaldabaoth, not the fake God of this world. This is where Arius was literally almost, well, he didn't literally say it, but he was pretty much saying the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world that he was God. Not convincing the world that he didn't exist, but convincing the world that he was God. And that was the Gnostic viewpoint. But of course, they lost because the Roman government supported the Orthodox and the Orthodox had a different doctrine. And that is the doctrine that created the Catholic Church. And from the Catholic Church doctrine, you had the doctrines of Calvinism, Protestantism, which has created all your other denominations. So you're not believing in whatever the true Jesus was, if he ever existed. You're believing in the doctrines that people in the 200s and 300s and 400s and 500s decided that you should believe. So I want you to think about that for a minute and always subscribe to the channel and always remember you have to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good journey. Good vibrations.